Hi, so let's explain today's assignment. Um, you are of course going, it changed, the folders changed because we had to, it needs to be uniform across um, no matter your subject or um, your teacher, so the folders kind of changed. Um, you have to go into the content folder and then we are starting our emotion and motivation unit. So the one that actually won um, the highest feedback was uh, chapter 17, therapy and change. And um, I needed time to really make that actually um, mean something for us to do. So I went with our second highest choice, which was emotion and motivation, which is chapter 12. 13 or something like that and um, so that's what we are doing for this week one thing that I absolutely love is you know this is going to be more of a project based for this week and there's like little things to kind of do along the way so the first thing that we did today was our emotion chart so you have this um, the Google page there it is and there are a few things that you're going to do First, you are going to make a Y and X axis so that you have four quadrants, okay? Once you do that, um, you are going to kind of build it out. So here is my example. This is my Y axis and my X axis, and that's the extent of math that we are doing in this class. Um, on the X axis, on the left side, I have low emotions, and on the right side, I have high emotions. On the y-axis, towards the top, I have positive emotions, and then on the bottom, I have negative emotions. So now that I have my chart kind of built, I am going to scroll down, and you are going to choose eight words from this list to kind of track down. Um, one word that people uh, we use today in class was zeal. Uh, we had a kid who didn't know what zeal meant, and so we had to look up the definition. And within the definition, it said much enthusiasm, um, high passion. It was a uh, very touchy feely kind of, and like very like you are committed to this whatever it was that you are going to be talking about. So when we're looking at zeal, we have high enthusiasm, and it definitely gives that impression of having a huge kind of commitment to whatever if it's a feeling or a project or you know a hobby like whatever that you are zealous about that there is kind of that huge um, commitment towards it and huge a lot of enthusiasm so we said that zeal was going to be high emotion because you are like super passionate and super excited and then we said that it was a positive emotion so we have it way up here um, in this quadrant and we said that it is positive for you to be enthusiastic and um, and the definition just kind of had like a positive connotation to it and so that is why we put it here and um, when the next word that we saw was angry and if you read angry like the definition it kind of led us to think that it was also high intensity by the way, that's what I mean by high emotion. It's high intensity. And um, there is a huge negative kind of aspect to it. So as a class, we kind of put it here. And then as we were going through some of the other words, like to me, I don't think angry is going to be like extreme negative. And I don't even think angry is really high emotion. For me, I probably would have put um, You know, I would probably put it here, right, right there, because I would imagine that like furious would go on this side. I would put rage, you know, closer on this side. Um, so I, I feel like there are other words that I would probably use to reach that high emotional, that high intense kind of category that I was thinking of. So what you're going to do. And you cannot use zeal or angry because, you know, we just did it all together. You are going to choose eight words and you are going to plot them here. Once you have them plotted, you kind of have to kind of think of uh, what 
are they kind of talking about? I had one person who kind of put gloomy over here on the low emotion and um, depression would follow there too probably. So using like all of these different words and kind of putting them and plotting them here. And then once you have plotted your eight words and kind of thought about where you're putting them and why you're putting them there, you are going to scroll back up to this page and you have these questions that you need to kind of answer. Let's go ahead and change the color just to make sure that people aren't forgetting to do that. Um, you are going to ask, the first question is asking you, would any of these words um, be limited depending on your method of communication? So are any of those words on the list, or maybe you could think of another word, um, would it kind of change the way that you are thinking? Um, like, if I were to, would I use that word in a text message, or would it have a d different meaning if we were face-to-face, -face? okay? There's a few words that, like, I, you know, tone doesn't necessarily come across in the text messaging or in an email, and so sometimes it plays a huge role if you are face-to-face -face with someone, like I thought some, I thought Haley was mad at me, but then once I spoke to her, it was like, oh no, she just had a question, and then, oh, okay, well then, there's no problem. So sometimes communication kind of seems different, and so that first question is just really just asking, are there any words that maybe you should not text, or are there any words that, you know, have a different meaning if you were to text? So that's what that question is asking. The second one is reads, what words from the emotion word list should be automatically disused when communicating professionally within a team setting? So if you are put into a group with two friends and two people that you don't really know, um, how are you going to speak to them through text or through um, emails? Are you going to have a more formal tone? Is there a reason for that? Um, are you going to be a little bit more lax? Are you going to think that using like abbreviated text messaging, would that be appropriate? Um, as long as it's your peers, would that be okay? Or does it depend on how well you know that person? That third question is asking, which negative word has the most negative connotation? So connotation means what kind of feelings are attached to that one word. Um, I had a real interesting uh, one student kind of said that the word frustrating was her worst negative connotation, which to me, I was like, that totally doesn't make sense. Frustrating isn't that bad. But then she kind of explained how like that's the word that her parents use when they are kind of upset. And um, so that definitely has negative connotation and kind of takes it to the next level. So what word, and it doesn't necessarily have to be on the list, uh, what word would have that negative connotation, and then you just kind of have to explain what your mindset is, okay? I hope that made sense. hope it all went well. If it doesn't, email me, and then probably from there I'm going to tell you to log into Zoom at 12. So, bye guys.